problem that physicists are, are rather worried about. It's called the Boltzmann brain problem. There was an article actually discussing uh, how cosmologists were, were arguing forth about, uh, about, back and forth about this. It appeared, I think, January 15, 2008, in the New York Times by Dennis Overby. It was, it was called Big Brain Theory. Have cosmologists lost theirs? Because <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, essentially the problem is this. If you're looking at things from a quantum theoretic standpoint, it's much more probable that you get a fluctuation into a smaller volume than into a larger volume that had some regularity associated with it, like our universe does with a 13.7 billion year history and all of us having personal histories and so on and so forth. It's st when you get a really large place, uh, space, it's more statistically likely from a quantum mechanical perspective that what fluctuates into existence is a single brain with the sensations being fed into it. Okay? And the problem here is that um, in the most common models of the multiverse, that is actually more likely than the fact that you and I exist the way that we take ourselves to uh, having a personal history. So in other words, you could say that the multiverse is falsified because the sort of people that we take ourselves to be aren't typical observers within it. <laughs> and um, cosmologists have been trying to find a way around this, but it involves a lot of gerrymandering of mathematics. Okay. So, and then as a logical point, it seems to provide an all too easy explanation of anything that's happened or may happen. And by so doing, it really winds up explaining nothing at all. So why persist in that strategy? Well, this is what Leonard Susskind, who's a, a landscape theorist at Stanford University, had to say about it. If for some unforeseen reason, the landscape turns out to be inconsistent, maybe for mathematical reasons or because it disagrees with observation, then as things stand now, we'll be in a very awkward position. For without any explanation of nature's fine-tunings, fine we'll be very hard-pressed to answer the ID critics. <laughs> Intelligent design. Yeah. Intelligent design, ID. Um, and as Bernard Carr put it, to the hardline physicist, the multiverse may not be entirely respectable, but it's at least preferable <laughs> to invoking a creator. <laughs> Indeed, anthropically inclined physicists like Susskind and Weinberg are attracted to the multiverse precisely because it seems to dispense with God as the explanation of cosmic design. Well, why would that be so important? This is what Richard Lewontin had to say. He's a, an evolutionary biologist um, at Harvard. Our willingness to accept scientific claims that are against common sense is the key to understanding uh, the real struggle between science and the supernatural. We take the si side of science in spite of the patent absurdity of some of its constructs, <laughs> in spite of the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated just-so stories, because we have a prior commitment, a commitment to materialism. Moreover, that materialism is absolute, for we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. I mean, anyone who believes in God could believe in anything. <laughs> <laughs> a little irony here. Uh, to appeal to an omnipotent deity is to, be, is to allow at any moment that the regularities of nature may be ruptured and miracles may happen. <laughs> well, uh, in the multiverse, anything can happen, and it can happen for no reason at all. In other words, the materialist is forced to believe in random miracles as an explanatory principle. <laughs> In a theistic universe, however, nothing happens without a reason. And miracles are therefore intelligently directed deviations from divinely maintained regularities and thus are also expressions of a rational purpose. So, um, as a conclusion then, I would suggest that scientific materialism is epistemically self-defeating because when you push it to the extremes that you have to to make it try to explain everything, uh, you find that it renders scientific rationality itself impossible. Thanks.